It's a song about wanderlust, with a title taken from a poem about the irresistible urge to set out for new places and adventures. It was written and intended for a punk rock band, but ended up going to number five on the chart. And when it's played in concerts, the first verse and chorus is always sung by the fans in attendance before he and the band join in. Bruce Springsteen's Hungry Heart is a special song that represents a fork in the road for one of rock's best songwriters. And we've been coming along for the journey since it was first released back in 1980 on Springsteen's only double album, The River. If you like this episode, don't forget to give it a like at the end and hit that subscribe button. The River wasn't intended to be a double album at first. His fifth release, it contains holdover material from songs that didn't make it to Darkness on the Edge of Town, filled out with songs recorded at his own Telegraph Hill studio in New Jersey and at the Power Station in New York with the E Street Band. That collection of 10 songs, which included what was then the title track, The Ties That Bind, were even mixed and intended for release until Springsteen listened to the tapes and the sequence of the songs and realized that to him there was something missing. He says he felt like what he heard was lacking in unity. So he canceled the release with his record label. His manager and co-producer John Landau then suggested that what he needed to do to make this body of work feel complete was to tackle a double album, a balance of uplifting anthemic songs and darker songs that showcase his unique ability as a storyteller. Springsteen agreed, and they all went back to the studio. Over 50 songs in total were recorded, with 20 of them making it on The River, which hit stores in October of 1980. The album is often put on best of lists for fans of Springsteen's catalog. It is one of the best examples of his peculiar knack for taking a sad subject and making it sound joyous and vice versa. Steeped in stories from the heartland about people that we can likely relate to no matter where we live. The lead single from the river, Hungry Heart, can be found as track one on side two. And it certainly struck a chord. It became Springsteen's first major success on the Billboard Hot 100 chart when it came in at number five. The way this particular song came about is interesting. Springsteen had gone to see the Ramones perform and met with the late Joey Ramone afterward. Ramone, knowing that his friend, the artist Patti Smith, had a hit with her recording of Springsteen's Because the Night, suggested to Springsteen that he write a song for his band. Springsteen had been inspired by what he'd seen the Ramones do on stage and said that he would write them a song. And then he went home and did just that, that very night, in only a few hours. But it didn't end up being recorded by the Ramones, of course. When Springsteen played it for John Landau, he was convinced by Landau to keep it for himself and record it for the river. Ramon said in interviews afterward that Landau saw the potential for royalties for his client. And that's probably true. But we have to admit at this point that Hungry Heart sounds like it was always written for Springsteen to sing. And it would be hard to imagine anyone else delivering the song with the same degree of impact. And here's something else interesting about the final recording of the song, finished at the record plant, months after the first incarnation of The River was scrapped. Springsteen's voice is slightly sped up on the recording, which is why it might sound a little bit different from some of his other songs. A studio trick, done in the mix, under the eye of Springsteen and his two co-producers on the album, Landau and little Steven Van Zandt from the E Street Band. And the high voices you hear singing in the song, that's Mark Volman and Howard Kalin, AKA Flo and Eddie. Legendary singers from the Turtles brought in to provide those amazing backups. The title of the song is taken from Ulysses, a poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson. In the poem, Tennyson says, for always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. And in another part of the poem, he says, I am a part of all that I have met, yet all experience is an arch where through gleams that untraveled world whose margin fades forever and ever when I move. 
And this is the key sentiment in Springsteen's Hungry Heart. That the point of it all in life is to wander, even though that wandering may cause heartbreak and more along the way. That the journey is the story. Hungry Heart starts like this. I've got a wife and kids in Baltimore, Jack. I went out for a ride and I never went back. Like a river that don't know where it's flowing, I took a wrong turn and I just kept going. Springsteen says, Like a river that don't know where it's flowing, I took a wrong turn and I just kept going. Think about that. The river doesn't have any idea where it's going, but it rumbles along anyway. The nature of moving water, the nature of someone with a hungry heart, always seeking something new, what's over the horizon or around the corner. By saying here that he took a wrong turn and just kept going, it's an admission that stepping out on his wife and kids in Baltimore in this song was wrong, but like the river, he's going to rush on anyway. And then the chorus kicks in, and this is where another bit of Springsteen genius lines up in the song. The chorus goes, Everybody's got a hungry heart. Lay down your money and you play your part. Everybody's got a hungry heart. He could have written, I've got a hungry heart or something like that. But by choosing to include everybody, he acknowledges the part of us that relates to any kind of wandering spirit. By that inclusion, by making the song a we song instead of a me song, Springsteen gives us license to take part in the journey too, even if the journey is a little bit wrong. This inclusive feeling was first illustrated when fans in Chicago came to see Springsteen and the E Street Band after this song was released and hit the top 10 at a show on November 20th, 1980 at the Rosemont Horizon. The crowd in the audience spontaneously sang the first verse and chorus of the song word for word. The band then joined in, and a tradition was born. Thereafter, when Hungry Heart is played live in concert, fans always sing that first verse in the chorus before Springsteen and the band join in to this day. And the song continues with the next verse. I met her in a Kingstown bar. We fell in love I knew it had to end. We took what we had and we ripped it apart. Now here I am down in Kingstown again. Heartbreak, the rough and tumble rocky road of the wanderer who just can't help himself but stumble along love's highway. The Kingstown location is debated, but there is a Kingstown, Maryland, a slightly backwater town not too far from Baltimore, which is referenced in the first verse. These are places that Springsteen definitely had been through, playing the club circuit around his native New Jersey. The chorus repeats, and then the final verse. Everybody needs a place to rest. Everybody wants to have a home. Don't make no difference what nobody says. Ain't nobody like to be alone. And that's the hardest part of being a wanderer. The fact that we all need a home to go to and someone to be there for us so that we're not alone. But the way Springsteen sings these lines, it seems more like a fleeting thought, a wave out the door, goodbye, as the chorus repeats at the end of the song, once again proclaiming that we, everybody, has a hungry heart on this journey of life. In Ulysses by Alfred Lord Tennyson, it says, My purpose holds. To sail beyond the sunset and the baths of all the western stars until I die. And it says, That which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts. Made weak by time and fate, but strong in will. To strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. And that is what Springsteen's hungry heart includes in its verses and choruses that there is a seeker in every one of us, something that we all must look for, even if we never find it. Not bad for a rock song. It remained Springsteen's biggest hit until it was finally topped by Dancing in the Dark, which went to number two on the Billboard chart in 1984. Springsteen has never had a number one hit. But it doesn't matter, never mattered to fans. 
Anyone who's ever bought a ticket to a Springsteen concert knows that when you see the boss, you see more than a rock show. You are in the presence of a kind of rock and roll church, enthralled by the power of the songs and the players on stage to take these songs written about average daily life, even the saddest parts, and exalt them up to the rafters by the collective we spirit of rock and roll. Led by a poet and a wanderer, who both left the Jersey Shore long ago and also never left it at all, telling its stories in songs all along the way. I'm Janda, and this has been Behind the Song. Special thanks, as always, to Christian Lane for the music you hear on these podcast episodes. If you like it, give it a thumbs up at the end and hit subscribe. And if you want to watch short excerpts of these videos, do that on the Behind the Song podcast TikTok channel. On the way, much more classic rock and roll.